From breaking unbreakable codes to simulating the human brain, quantum computing is no longer science fiction. It's real, it's wild, and it's coming fast. But what exactly is it? And why are countries racing to master it? In this video, we're decoding quantum computing. What it is, how it works, and why it just might change everything you know about technology. From cracking DNA codes to designing new drugs and even securing our future internet, quantum computing is very real and it's going to change everything. Unlike your regular computer that uses bits, which are just 0s and 1s, quantum computers use qubits, tiny particles like electrons or photons that can be both 0 and 1 at the same time. That's thanks to quantum mechanics, the wild rules that govern the tiniest particles in the universe. Imagine having a computer that doesn't check every answer one by one. It checks all of them at once. That's the power of quantum computing. It's not just faster, it's fundamentally different. Problems that would take a supercomputer thousands of years could potentially be solved by a quantum computer in minutes. Think of it like replacing a calculator with a crystal ball. We're still in the early stages, but even now, its potential has the tech world buzzing and investing billions. So how exactly does a quantum computer work behind the scenes? Let's find out. If classical computers are brilliant problem solvers, quantum computers are mind readers, only they use physics instead of magic. They run on quantum theory, the rules that apply to particles smaller than atoms. Instead of 0s and 1s like regular computers, quantum systems use qubits, which can be 0, 1 or both at the same time, thanks to a weird but real property called superposition. Now add entanglement to the mix. Another bizarre quantum trick where two qubits become so linked that if you change one, the other instantly responds even if they're miles apart. That's quantum teamwork. Together, superposition and entanglement allow quantum computers to test multiple possibilities at once and arrive at the right answer much faster than traditional systems ever could. But here's the twist. These qubits are extremely sensitive. Heat, noise, even a tiny vibration can mess them up. So they have to be kept ultra cold, colder than outer space, to work properly. Companies like IBM and Google use supercooled refrigerators to manage this delicate dance. It's like solving a jigsaw puzzle using probabilities instead of trial and error. Powerful, yes, but very tricky to get right. So what's the science behind these magical sounding principles? Let's break it down. Quantum computing doesn't just rely on speed. It relies on physics magic. Four big ideas make it all happen. Superposition, entanglement, decoherence, and interference. Let's start with superposition. This is what lets a qubit hold both 0 and 1 at the same time. Imagine flipping a coin. It's not just heads or tails, it's both until it lands. That's what makes quantum computers so powerful. They test multiple outcomes at once. Next comes entanglement. This one's like quantum telepathy. If two qubits are entangled, messing with one instantly affects the other, no matter how far apart they are. This connection helps quantum computers solve big problems faster. Then there's interference. Think of it as tuning a radio. Quantum computers use interference to boost the right answers and cancel out the wrong ones. And finally, decoherence. The not so fun part. When outside noise disturbs the system, the fragile quantum state breaks down. That's decoherence. It's why these machines need insanely quiet, cold environments to work. These principles aren't just cool, they're the engine behind everything quantum computers do. Now that we've unpacked the theory, let's explore the different types of quantum machines being built today. Not all quantum computers are built the same way, just like not all cars run on gas. Depending on how the qubits are made and controlled, we get different types of quantum machines. Superconducting quantum computers are the most common today. IBM and Google use these. They rely on electric circuits that are chilled to ultra-cold temperatures, allowing electrons to flow without resistance. These are great for solving chemistry problems, optimizing logistics, or designing new drugs. Trapped ion quantum computers use charged atoms suspended by electromagnetic fields. They're super stable and precise, perfect for algorithms that need high accuracy. 
Neutral atom systems use lasers to trap atoms with no charge. They're flexible and scalable, ideal for testing big, complex simulations. Quantum dots, tiny pieces of semiconductor material, are another method. They're promising for scaling quantum networks and sensors. And then there's photonic quantum computers which use particles of light. These are fast and energy efficient and could revolutionise secure communication with quantum encryption. Each type has its pros, cons and specialty areas. But together, they're racing towards the same goal. Scalable, stable quantum computing. Now, let's see where all this incredible tech is actually being used. You'll be surprised. Quantum computing isn't just theory, it's already showing real-world promise. Let's start with healthcare. Scientists can use quantum simulations to model molecules in ways no classical computer ever could. That means faster drug discovery and personalised medicine. Yes, even cancer treatments designed just for you. Next is finance. Banks like JP Morgan are testing quantum models to detect fraud and manage investment risks. They can analyse billions of possibilities in seconds, helping investors make smarter decisions. In cybersecurity, quantum computers can break today's encryption, but also create new unbreakable codes through quantum key distribution, or QKD. So while they might be a threat now, they're also the solution. Then there's climate and energy. Quantum computers can simulate weather systems and energy efficient materials, even power artificial photosynthesis for clean energy. And let's not forget AI. Quantum computing supercharges machine learning by optimizing huge data sets faster. Google's already experimenting with this to train smarter models in less time. Even urban planning is being transformed. Volkswagen used quantum tech to optimize traffic flow in Lisbon. Yep, quantum helped reduce traffic jams. So yes, the future is already here, just not evenly distributed yet. But what makes quantum computers so different from the laptops we use every day? Let's compare. Picture this. Your regular laptop is like a reliable delivery guy who drops off one package at a time. But a quantum computer? It's like teleporting all the packages at once. Classical computers use bits, which are either a zero or a one. They do one calculation at a time, following a set sequence. Powerful, yes but limited when problems get too complex. Quantum computers, on the other hand, use qubits. And thanks to superposition, a qubit can be both zero and one at the same time. This means quantum machines can perform multiple calculations simultaneously. It's not just fast, it's parallel thinking on steroids. Another game changer? Quantum logic doesn't follow the usual rules. Classical systems use logical gates like AND or OR. Quantum systems introduce weird gates like Q01, which blend and manipulate probabilities. The result? A computer that doesn't just think differently, it thinks in all directions at once. While classical computers are perfect for everyday use, quantum computers are built for supersized problems, like breaking encryptions, decoding genetic data, or simulating the universe itself. So who's actually using this game-changing power right now? Let's dive into the real players and platforms. You don't need to own a quantum computer to use one. In fact, most companies rent them, just like cloud storage. This model is called Quantum as a Service, or QAS, and it's opening doors for businesses everywhere. Take IBM Quantum, for example. It gives developers access to real quantum processes and tools like QuizKit, its own open source kit. Whether you're a beginner or a pro, you can run quantum algorithms right from your browser. Amazon Bracket is another big name. It offers access to multiple types of quantum hardware through AWS, so users can experiment with different systems and find what works best for their problem. D-Wave focuses on optimization problems. Its Leap platform is used in industries like finance and logistics to solve complex scheduling and planning challenges. Google Quantum AI is all about research. They're pushing the boundaries with advanced algorithms and hardware. And yes, they're the team behind the famous quantum supremacy moment. And don't forget Microsoft Azure Quantum, a one-stop shop for developing and running quantum programs in the cloud, backed by the power of Microsoft's infrastructure. Okay, so these platforms are powerful, but how are companies actually using them in real business? 
Let's explore. Quantum computing isn't just stuck in labs anymore. Big companies are already applying it to real-world problems, and some results are pretty jaw-dropping. In finance, JP Morgan Chase is using quantum algorithms to improve trading strategies and risk modeling. They're crunching massive data sets to predict outcomes and detect fraud faster than ever. In medicine, quantum simulations are helping researchers understand how molecules behave. Google simulated a chemical reaction using a quantum computer, a breakthrough that could change how we discover drugs and treat diseases. Volkswagen used quantum tech to optimize traffic patterns in Lisbon, creating smarter, less congested city streets. Sounds futuristic? It's already happened. In AI, quantum computers are speeding up the training of deep learning models. That means faster, smarter machines that can make sense of massive data faster than classical systems. Even in supply chains, companies are using quantum systems to plan efficient delivery routes, manage inventory better, and cut down waste. And here's the best part. Most of them are doing this via the cloud. No massive machine in the office, just smart algorithms and a good internet connection. But every technology has a shadow side. So what happens to our online security when quantum enters the chat? Let's find out. If quantum computing had a middle name, it would be disruption. And nowhere is that truer than in cryptography, the science behind secure communication. Most of today's internet security relies on the difficulty of solving giant math problems. For example, RSA encryption depends on the challenge of factoring huge prime numbers. Classical computers struggle with that. It could take them years. But with a quantum algorithm called Shor's algorithm, it can be done in minutes. Oops. Even elliptic curve cryptography, or ECC, used in everything from emails to cryptocurrency, becomes vulnerable. Quantum systems can break it too. Even symmetric encryption and hash functions like SHA-2 and SHA-3 are anti-immune. Grover's algorithm gives quantum computers a speed boost that could reduce their strength unless we double key sizes and outputs. That's why researchers and governments are racing to develop quantum-safe cryptography, also known as post-quantum encryption. It's a new kind of digital armor that can withstand the quantum onslaught. So yes, quantum is powerful, but it forces us to rethink how we protect our data in the digital age. So where is this all going? Is this hype, or are we truly on the edge of a new tech era? If you thought the space race was intense, welcome to the quantum race. Countries across the globe are in a high-stakes sprint to reach quantum supremacy, the point where quantum computers outperform classical ones in, in a real-world task. In 2019, Google claimed victory by solving a problem in 200 seconds that would take supercomputers 10,000 years. That sparked global action. The US, China and the EU are now pouring billions into research with national missions, private-public partnerships and startup support. And India? It's not far behind. The National Quantum Mission is backed by $1.1 billion to build labs, train talent and build homegrown quantum machines. The country already has quantum labs in the army, a center of excellence in Pune, and a surge of startups in finance and healthcare jumping into the game. The challenge now? Building hardware, nurturing talent, and forming collaborations across sectors. Leaders like Rina Dayal believe India's talent pool is strong. It just needs more labs, education, and investor awareness to reach its full potential. So no, quantum computing isn't for our grandchildren. It's here, it's heating up, and it's rewriting the rules of global power. Quantum computing is no longer a theory. It's our new reality. From securing data to reshaping entire industries, its potential is limitless. But the big question is, are we ready for the quantum leap? Let us know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.